Um, yeah, let's get running a little bit and you gotta keep your football fitness up. It's all well and good being a great player. Hey ducks. What's coming? You're just stopping. Hi guys, Ian from footballboost.co.uk here. Today we're gonna to start talking about pre-season. Okay, we're gonna try and do a six week series, just looking at getting you ready for the start of your season. European leagues are getting ready to kick off after the summer break. We're gonna start off this week by talking about building a base. We're gonna move on to some more specific stuff as we progress. So it's six weeks really we're looking at trying to get started for the ready of the season. Um, today I'm gonna to start off by just going for a, pretty much like a 30 minute run. Now, I've got a few pairs of shoes here. I'm gonna throw those on and um, I'll get started in a minute. Shoe wise, doesn't really matter what you choose as long as it's something that's gonna be comfortable for you. Um, so I've got a few different pairs here. Depends on the surface you're running on as well, but you probably want a pair of shoes that you start off with, just ones that are comfortable. So, what I'm gonna do today, um, and if I can find my phone, is we've set up a footballboost.co.uk um, Strava group. So um, Strava, and we'll put this on the screen properly so you can see it, but um, Strava is a app um, for tracking your activity. So you can use your phone to work out um, what you've been doing. So let me turn on location services. So. Can follow me around. There's a link right now you can join um, into our footballboots.co.uk Strava group. So you can not only track yourself, but see what we're getting up to, see what other people with football boots are getting up to. And the idea is just really to see where you're at at the start of pre-season, where you're at the end of pre-season. Just keep an eye on your stats and, and see how you're improving and make sure that you're pushing yourself. Um, you don't want pre-season to be too easy. We're definitely gonna start off easy today. We don't wanna get any injuries, anything like that. So we're just gonna go for like a 30 minute run. Um, if you've already got a good base and you already think that you're fit enough, then um, certainly you can look at going further or longer. And if you're only really getting started and you don't do a huge amount of running, then you should definitely still be doing this today. Um, but you wanna make sure that you maybe just walk and run, walk and run, just break it up. It doesn't have to be um, too intense. Right, so location services are on. You can choose between um, cycling and running. Um, so today was all gonna be about running, but we're gonna do some cycling and some cross training in future videos. So um, I'm gonna get myself set up. Um, you pretty much hit go as you go. It's gonna track me on through my whole run. We'll look at it whilst we're going, and um, we'll look at it at the end as well. And the results will end up getting posted up to that Football Boots Strava group as I was talking about. So um, today I'm gonna wear these um, the Nike Pegasus, um, very classic um, running boot from Nike and um, something I've worn a lot already. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna get on with this. We're gonna throw these on and we'll get out and start running. I'm hoping to go about 5K. I'm thinking it's probably gonna take me about 27 minutes or something like that. Um, it's just a cruisy kind of start of the preseason, just building your base. You wanna just get your general fitness up. You wanna get your heart going and all that kind of good stuff. All right, so let me throw these on. The other thing I do have is um, my GPS watch, um, and I'll throw that on too, so you guys don't have to use um, your phone, you can use GPS devices too. And that all plugs into Strava and does all that kind of good stuff. So, so later on in the series, we'll talk about um, perhaps a, a one on just how to choose which shoes right for you, because people have different shoe types. So we can look at uh, whether you get like a stability shoe or a neutral running shoe, and there's a few different names, um, but a lot of them do similar stuff. Just gonna throw on, throw on the watch and we'll get ready to go. This is quite a, quite a handy one. It does um, cycling and um, running and can give you a few stats about what's going on. Okay, let's get the, uh, the phone ready. Right guys, um, I'm gonna go running and you can join me there. All right, so here we go, stats are already starting. It's just gonna let us know what I'm getting up to. I'm just walking at the moment. It's giving you an idea of how long it's gonna take to do certain different stuff. And um, yeah, let's get running a little bit and um, we can get more into this in a bit. I was gonna hit go on the old GPS watch too. Right, so we're off and we're running. And one of the things you think about when you're going, don't start off too fast. You wanna make a run and still hold a conversation. So my plan is to still be able to talk to you guys whilst we're running. So one of the nice things with using the GPS is it can tell you how fast you're going. So until you start getting an idea of what your ideal pace is, you can use, use that to let you know. Um, I'm thinking I'm probably running about a five minute kilometer, maybe five and a half. I probably want to do about five and a half. Usually you start off faster than you realize. So you think you're going slowly, maybe just take a little bit off and then you can always increase later on. You want to make sure you get warmed up properly. Just be careful when you're running, make sure you're aware of any cars and stuff around you. You don't really want to run with headphones or anything because you can't hear what's coming. You're going to make sure that you look out for vehicles and stuff, be safe when you're running. 
Um, now one of the things I can do is I've started off, I've started off and I'm running on the concrete. It's not the greatest for um, what you can do. So if you get the opportunity, jump onto the grass. It's going to be a lot softer on your feet, on your body. It's going to protect you from injuries. So where you can run on grass, I'm going to run from here out to the football fields. And I'll probably run around the fields a little bit. But yeah, every opportunity you can, try, try and make sure that you get on the grass because it makes it a little bit more hard work than running on the path or the or the road or wherever. So if you can, it's great. It's great to run on trails and stuff like that too. You've got to watch out for um, little holes and stuff in the ground, I suppose. But yeah, it's much easier on your joints. It gives you a bit of a harder workout and it's going to help you with injury prevention. A little bit later on in this series, we'll start actually doing some running on the pitches wearing your boots. And that's a great time to be breaking those new boots into. If you've got a new pair of boots, you can go for a half an hour running them. Just get your feet used to them a little bit before you start playing football in them, before you go to proper trainings. So a couple of important things to think about when you're running is how you turn over your feet. It's called cadence. And you don't want to be making really long strides. That's going to make it more likely you're going to get injured. If you want to go faster, if you want to speed up, you've got to think about turning your feet over quicker. So just pick your feet up and do more steps rather than longer steps. More steps is definitely the way to go. All right, so let's have a quick look at the, the stats and see where we're at. So I've run about 2K so far in about 10 minutes. Split time is probably being a bit generous, so probably more like five minutes, which is probably ideal. So you just get a little bit of information from your phone as to what's going on. That beep you heard was my GPS watch saying it was 2K as well. So you've got some options there. So the great thing about going out for a run is you get out, see a little bit of fresh air. It's pretty relaxing just to, to go out and do that. If you feel like it's too much hard work, if you feel like you're stretching yourself too much, then just ease off a little bit. Walk if you have to. Then when you feel rested, go again. Over the time, you've managed to build it up and you do a lot more. So over these hot summer days, it's important to make sure you stay hydrated. I have water, water with me if you're going far enough, but if you get the opportunity, just stop and spray yourself in the face with the water. It doesn't take, take much to stay hydrated. That hydration, we're definitely gonna do kind of what to drink for football video, which is talking about before the games, during the games, after the games. We'll do a specific pre-season training version of that and then we'll get more into it for the season itself all right great i've nearly made it to, to the pitches so i'm going to run around here a little bit it's going to be a lot easier on the body definitely recommend if you guys want to join in download the strava app or connect your gps in already if you're already signed up just make sure you join the football boots group and then next week make sure to give a few of you guys a shout out anybody clocking some good mileage or Maybe doing stuff for the first time. Just making sure you're getting out there and starting on your pre-season. Right, the pitches are just over there, so I've got to go around the duck pond and uh, get onto the pitch and we'll have a little run around there for a bit. Now, swimming's a good thing to, to throw into your pre-season too. I'm not going to be jumping in there today, but it's a good option. Hey, ducks. So yeah, swimming. Swimming's a great option. It's really going to be good on your body. You can even try running in the pool if you want. That's another good thing to be doing. Just a bit of resistance with the water. Really good, especially if you've got an injury or something. Go to the water first, do some swimming, do some running in the water. That'll be much better for you than trying to run too hard on the ground straight away. All right, I made it to the local pitches. You guys might recognize this from some of our tests. And I'm just gonna run around the outside of the pitch. I'm not gonna do any extra sprints or anything this time. We'll add those in later on. Next week I'm probably going to be doing a duathlon talking about um, cross training and just how cycling can be good for you too. So next week's video will probably be focused on that. Week three we'll come back down to the pitch and we'll look a bit more into the high intensity workouts. Just adding in a bit more of those sprints because obviously football isn't just one big jog around the pitch. It's a lot of short sharp moments. So we're trying to add some sprints into our training. We'll be running from corner to corner, all that kind of good stuff. Right now, I just want you guys to get fit, increase your base level. It doesn't matter how fit you are, you might be watching this going, that's easy, it's easy. Great, get out there and do it so it's a good warm up for you. If you're thinking, Jesus, it's too hard, 
to do something that suits you, but just get out there because you've got to keep your football fitness up. It's all well and good being a great player, a lot of skills, but if you can't run after the ball or run away from the opposition and you can't last 90 minutes, then you're no good to anybody. So skills are good, but fitness is really crucial too. Players like David Beckham, exceptional level of fitness. Already a player as well, but they always put the hard work in on the training ground. All right, I don't know if you can see the watch there or not, but I'm saying I'm running about five minute kilometers still. And uh, 19 minutes almost into the run, nearly 4K done. Probably some conversions for mileage later on, but. Now, I was talking earlier on about that cadence, how quickly you pick your feet up and stuff. It's really important that you make sure you're running really relaxed. Try and relax your shoulders, relax your legs. If you feel, if you're too tight and you're pushing yourself too much, you're actually gonna run slower and it's gonna be more hard work. So you definitely wanna just try and relax. It can be hard, especially when it's getting to be hard work, but as much as possible. Just try and keep your body relaxed, shoulders relaxed, arms relaxed. You wanna probably swing your arms about here with your arm in a kind of about this position. If you turn your hand too much like this, it can actually affect the way that your feet move and the way that you pronate. And I'll talk about foot types, things we can do to get around those in a separate video and also how you can work out what your foot type is. But yeah, just relax your body whilst you're running if you can. Absolute stunner of a day. What we'll do for you at the end of this video is stay tuned because we'll load up the Strava stats on the website so you can see what it looks like once you've uploaded your information and get an idea of all the interesting stuff they show you. Helps you keep track of your progression. Even during the season, you can keep this up too. Now, I would recommend that this base stuff, this kind of 30 minute run, should probably be doing this once a week now. And then the other stuff that we start talking about next week, you add that in too. You've been doing more than one thing a week. Definitely want to pick up your fitness for the season. Right, we've got four or five minutes to go. Well, maybe six. Anyway, this is the point where it's going to start to hurt a little bit. Just dig it in for another minute or two. Just make sure you push yourself. Just try and maintain the pace if you can. You don't need to go faster, you just want to maintain. And then what we'll do is we'll use the last three or four minutes for a cool down. You don't want to be sprinting right to the end. You better if you let yourself cool down in those last few minutes. Much better than, than going 100% the whole way. That's what it's all about. It's just looking after yourself. You don't need injuries. So make sure you have a little cool down in those last four or five minutes. Right, so I'm very much into the cool down now. Getting ready, just taking a little bit easier, slowing down a little bit, taking a bit off your pace. Run down to the end, then we'll jump on and load the stats and see how we went. Right, that's it then, we're finished, so I'm gonna hit stop. Said I went 28 and a half minutes, 5.7K. So I was planning on going a little slower. That's probably why we didn't quite get to 30 minutes. But that's what you can look at now, you can see the statistics, it tells you what's been going on, so interesting stuff. Right, I'm back, so I'm just gonna um, put in a title for the run, pre-season, week one, and then we'll just call it base run. Save that. We don't need a photo, let's go back, just joking. You can even tell it what shoes you're running. It shows you some of the shoes I've worn before. So I was wearing my Air Pegasus 29 Grey. Shows you how far I've been them before. Description, you got anything, if you've got like an injury or a niggle or something, then make sure you put that in the description just so you know. You just remember anything about your run. The more information you can have when you look back, you're not gonna remember this run so much in six weeks time. But if there's something you wanna put in there now, like you had like a tight hamstring or something like that, then it's good because you just might find um, useful in the future. So anyway, you can post it to Facebook and fun stuff like that if you want. You don't have to make it public, you can lock it. And um, I'm just gonna save my activity now. And that will get added in. All right, so we'll look at the stats on the website. Let's just jump back on the app real quickly, actually, before we go to the website. So the app's got some really nice information built into it. it tells you the total moving time, your total distance, calories burned. Also does some good stuff about telling you kind of your achievements. So it's talking about progression. Well, I'll look at those in again in a second. But it's all about running the same distances or the same routes. It can tell you like how you're getting on. Then at the bottom here, we've got um, splits per kilometer or splits per mile, depending on which setup you use, I prefer to use kilometers. Anyway, so the first K, you can see that I was kind of warming up into it, it has that slightly longer bar. Then I pick up the pace a little bit, especially those second and third Ks, that was when I was running on the road as well, on the pavement, so it's a little bit faster anyway. Um, picking up the pace there, 
and then a little bit slower when I was running on the grass for kilometer four and five. And then you can see where I slowed down at the end just to kind of have a bit of recovery um, and go from that to finish off. Um, anyway, so let's jump into the stats. So you can see it says like it was my second best pace for 400 meters, half mile pace, my third best mile pace, third best again and my 5K pace. So I ran a 24-14 5K. Supposedly that's the third fastest I've ever run it. I'm not sure about that. At least it was the third fastest I've run it on the Strava app. Um, and that's why it's useful to, to use this as often as possible. You can keep all your times plugged in. Anyway, let's go look at the website and obviously at the footballboost.co.uk group on Strava 2. Segments is all about if you run um, certain tracks again or you can even set up like little areas for you, um, just specific stuff. So here you go, this is the Strava website and you can sign up here and join in and create an account. This is our footballboost.co.uk specific page. You guys can join in and appear on the leaderboard. And um, if I just switch to me being logged in, then we can see that it's got um, the leaderboard. Recent activity will show this last run we just did, preseason week one base run. Shows what's been going on and you can click into that. And you can see all the information about what's been going on. So there's my profile and it just shows you the run and all that kind of good stuff. All right guys, so um, go sign up for that if you want to. Take part, we'll see you next week for part two. In the meantime, go enjoy your football.